In this video, we'll look at two different flashlights from two different brands at two drastically different price points and try to make sense of the how, because regardless of their price points, it feels illegal how affordable they are given their specs and quality. This right here is by a company called Wubin. Quite small and therefore easily pocketable, rectangular so there's no rolling with a fully anodized aluminum body and to amplify durability, it's rated IP68, which means it's literally the highest possible rating for both dust and water resistance, being able to be completely submerged and stay powered on, no problem. And at least today, looking on Amazon, it's less than 20 US dollars, around 25 at regular price. Now typically, the first consideration of flashlights is output, so let's start there. With the press of the single button on the side, the light turns on, and currently it's on its minimum output of just 2 lumens. Now unlike many, if not most other flashlights with preset output modes, this guy's got a wheel where you can spin and dial in the exact output you want, maxing out at 400 lumens, way more than anyone would need for normal, everyday carry use cases. I mean, 400 lumens is even plenty to go hiking or dog walking in a pitch black trail with confidence and easily see 100 feet or 30 meters out. But you notice when looking at the lens when it's shut off that there's two LED chips. When it's turned on, pressing and holding that power button switches from that white light to a full RGB light fixed at 10 lumens. And spinning, you can see that you can cycle through the color wheel. But beyond all that, the user experience in real life use is fantastic too. The head, as you can see, has full 180 degree rotation. This might seem like a gimmick until you know that it has a magnetic butt and this clip that has three locking positions. You find any magnet friendly surface no matter what the orientation and you have perfectly angled hands-free illumination, but also, whether it's a shirt pocket, a strap on a bag, or the brim of a cap, secure the torch and angle the beam all while retaining full control of beam color or beam output with the spin of the wheel. Now, from any state, whether it's on in any of the modes or off, double pressing the button will send the light into signal mode, strobing between red and green. So if, say, you've got a kid who goes to after-school activities on a bicycle, you can have them rotate the three-position clip, anchor it to their backpack, rotate the business end to face outwards, and double-click the button so drivers can spot them easily as they ride home from, say, their baseball practice after sunset. Lastly, the main user interface edge. You already know about the button and the wheel, but this physical slider is great as well. All the way to this side of the switch is the lockout mode, which means there's no worry of accidentally turning it on and draining battery. One click over and you're ready to use, and shooting it far to the other end reveals a USB Type-C charging port. I think that covers just about everything about this light, but again, this whole video is primarily a reflection of how terrifyingly affordable this is. I mean, if you've been with me for a bit, you know I'm in the manufacturing space here in Toronto, albeit making things for heavy industry, and not so much in terms of consumer products, but I still very clearly know what it takes to actually make a physical product. You just saw that today, looking at Amazon, this light sells between 20 and 30 US dollars and something you may or may not know is that if you are a company and want to sell on Amazon Prime and leverage their fulfillment through their warehouses, they take 40%. So with Amazon's 40% skim, this means that if, say, this light sells for $25, by offering it as an Amazon Prime product, which it does, Amazon automatically takes 10 of those $25 when someone buys it, which means this company, Wubin, is still profitable grossing just 15 US dollars. Let that sink in. $15 to cover the cost of the aluminum, the anodization process, the switches, screws, screws, the freaking magnet, the two LED chips, the internal controls, the software to enable such a seamless user interface for the user, the battery, heck, the assembly, and the cost of shipping a container from their factory to an Amazon warehouse, and still be profitable. A few years ago, during some downtime at the metal fab shop, me and Eric made these, Queen P, chest promotion queens that have a hidden compartment. Like the flashlight, it too is made of aluminum, and like the flashlight, we anodize them at the workshop. Hopping to my website, you can see that when they're available, we sell them for 109 US dollars each. From the increased cost of raw materials, to machine time, to tool degradation, to human time, not to mention the time it takes for us to validate, print, and slap on a shipping label, then drive it to our local postal depot. At 109 US dollars, we would not be sustainably profitable if this queen was our full-time focus. And if we want to give up 40% and offer it on Amazon Prime, we'd literally be losing money. And again, it's just two parts. Well, three if you count the felt sticker on the bottom. Now compare this. This light has 22 parts and that's just what I can see or know for sure is involved. Feel free to pause for the minimum guaranteed list and remember this list doesn't even include the time and skilled labor to solder and assemble it all. What the actual f Profitable at $20 while giving up 40% to Amazon. I mean, even at economies of scale, this feels impossible, especially given the sheer high quality. I'm saying if this were a crappy product, it'd still be a miracle, but it's a genuinely excellent product. I mean, part of why a huge focus of our metal fab shop is making extremely large and heavy industrial objects is because there's just no point to even compete on stuff like this. Our competitive advantage in making gigantic metal objects is that the cost savings a client might enjoy by manufacturing offshore is instantly overshadowed by how not worth it is to pay for cross-ocean shipping for stuff that is just so heavy 
heavy and oversized. Anyways, I did say that we'd look at two flashlights at two drastically different prices, and this right here is called the EDC 37 by Nightcore. This is about 140 US dollars, and it too is dirt cheap for what it is. I mean, I'm holding what us humans would perceive as the sun in my hand. This ain't your grandfather's crappy mag light. Check this out. One press of this round button, we are at its low mode of 15 lumens, and as you can see, at not even a full charge, I've got over 170 hours of juice left at this output. That's literally more than 7 full days of constant runtime. Of course, cycling up to a next output of 100 lumens, that drops significantly, but still more than 24 hours straight. Then up to 400 lumens, and finally to its brightest sustained output of 1,500 lumens, there's still a constant runtime of more than 7 hours. But then we've got turbo mode at a hilariously absurd 8,000 lumens. Make no mistake, pretty much no one needs this. I mean, definitely not for EDC. This is more of a search and rescue torch. Also indicated with the ceramic strike pins for breaking glass. You know, like shattering a windshield and pulling someone out of a car wreck. But again, the sheer quality combined with the valuable feature sets and thoughtful design elements is what makes the asking price quote unquote cheap for what we actually get. I mean, this 8,000 lumen strobe will easily break through tree cover and be visible more than four football fields away, so signaling in an emergency. I'd say you being rescued after a hiking slip and fall just once is worth $140. And then combine that with the quality of manufacturing, reliability, and incredible durability and the sheer cost of raw materials and these ridiculously powerful high output LED chips. I just really don't get it. By the way, easily the best user interface design element is this very resistant lockout switch. I mean, at 8,000 lumens, if accidentally deployed on turbo mode, this will start a fire in your pocket or bag. Happened to me. Take my absolute favorite travel flashlight, the Nightcore T4K. Fully locking out involves remembering to double press and hold until you see the lock symbol with the number 2. And so, 100% my own fault, but I accidentally forgot, just chucked it into my bag when I was traveling a few months ago, and then smelled burning while I was on the subway in Tokyo, and as you can see, thankfully caught it early, but the turbo mode of the 4000 lumens, half the output of this guy, very quickly melted the interior pocket of my sling. Again, completely my own fault, but this resistant single physical lockout toggle is fantastic. Look, I said it before, this video is less of a flashlight video. I mean, even at 20 bucks, if you have no need for a flashlight, please don't impulse buy this or any other flashlight no matter how affordable you perceive it to be. This video has really been more of my reaction to the odd affordability of modern flashlights, especially given how good they are in both quality and user experience. And I'm sure this is just one example, but in a world today where I have to shop around for eggs because of how much more everything costs, the price of all of these is like a weird glitch, so I'm curious. Is there anything in your life, in your hobbies, that you are experienced with that also shocks you at how affordable it is? Let us know in the comments so everyone can learn from your expertise. For me, as an absolute flashlight nut, I need a flashlight every day for work, plus everyday carry as a category of things is a genuine hobby. But if you're interested in what I actually use daily beyond just a flashlight, you will definitely want to watch this video right up here. If you're feeling lucky though, this video down here is the one for you. I'll leave them both on screen for a few seconds so you can choose which one to watch next, but while you're deciding, consider subscribing and hitting that bell so you'll be notified the moment new videos just like this one drops.